bugger. Oh, bugger. Mayday, mayday. Oh, God. Don't run away from me now. Oh, God. I'm gonna just pray on that one. Don't fall over. This is all going about exactly as well as I expected it to, so, um, par for the course. If you've been following me for a while, or have had the opportunity to meet me in person at an event, you may have noticed one of my many light-up name badges. What originally started as a thank you gift project for my hospital nurses morphed into a mission to make myself a standout name badge that I could wear when out and about. It eventually led to the version that you see here. It's really not bad. In spite of some mishaps like the timing of the LEDs not syncing up, it runs for a pretty long time on a LiPo battery, and the rainbow tie-dye effect it takes on definitely makes up for the factory defects. But honestly, I think it could be made even cooler. Yeah! The only way to properly take this name badge to its final evolution is with a custom PCB and the help of PCB way to fabricate it. I don't have a great deal of experience with designing and making PCBs, so I was thrilled to be offered a bit of help from a new friend on this one. Now, I know that I helped to design it, but looking at it again, I don't know. I must have blacked out or something, because even though I've only ever assembled one PCB in my whole life, I seem to have designed myself one with over a hundred one millimeter squared individually addressable LEDs that I need to hand assemble and surface mount solder together. No big deal, right? Oh my God, what have I done? So yeah, I done did it. I ordered the PCBs before I had a chance to think too hard about it and check it out. Unfortunately, somebody also ordered the PCBs before somebody triple checked the pad arrangement on said PCB. But PCB Way are absolute champions in PCB fabrication and they've been remade and uh, these are the correct PCBs with absolutely no errors on them. That said, the PCBs themselves are not massively complicated in design if you missed getting a good look at them before. The main component on the board is obviously LEDs, 112 of them to be exact. There's also a resistor, some ceramic capacitors, and a tiny little surge protector chip up at the top corner. Up at the very top left, there are four pinout holes as well. That's where I'll be connecting the secret weapon behind making this PCB name badge truly awesome, a Pixel Blaze Pico. For those of you not already familiar with the Pixel Blaze, it is an incredibly small, insanely powerful board with the explicit purpose of making LED projects super quick and super awesome. It's designed and sold by excellent human Ben Henke, and the web interface and community-driven animation library alone make it 110% worth using. The Pico is the mini version, perfect for a small wearable. See, it really is quite small. Then again, everything on this project is pretty small. The PCB looks huge blown up on a screen, but in reality, it's not that big. And if the PCB is this small, that means the components in comparison are practically microscopic. I'm not kidding when I say microscopic. I can literally hold all of the components several times over in the palm of my hand, including their packaging. You can barely even see some of these things with the naked eye. Fun fact, these are some of the smallest addressable LEDs available on the market currently. What? This is fine. <laughs> Let's get things set up. Okay, this isn't so bad. This looks reasonable. I feel like I can do this, I think. <sighs> Clearly the reasonable first step here is to apply solder paste. Yeah, I prepared for this. I designed a little jig so that I would get perfect alignment. The way it works is pretty simple. Board just kind of pops in. Stencil just kind of goes on top. Like this is actually dead easy and will probably also be the last thing that is like that. I am using this Chip Quick NC191 LTA10 Smooth Flow Solder Paste. Let's just go for it, you know? Squidge a bit out. That's probably way too much. I'm just going to use my uh, DaVinci Resolve Studio License to spread this. And I can already tell that I've missed some, so... 
I think that worked. I hope that worked. I'm kind of afraid to take off the stencil. <laughs> I can't tell if it's ready or not. Okay, I'm going in. I can definitely see that there is some smudged bits in places. God, those pathways are very small. It is actually probably wiser to just wipe it off and start again. So let's just do that. Mind you, if I am doing any of this wrong and you are watching this video and you are a professional assembler of PCBs and soldering and all of that stuff and you are thinking to yourself, my God, they are doing this all wrong. Yeah, no, you're probably right. I almost certainly am. But you don't got to be mean about it, you know? You can leave a nice comment in the comment section. Okay, second try, second try. Little squidge. Let's just take the band-aid off. Ugh, this one's worse, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna try a little double stick tape, see if that helps keep it down. Okay. Let's try again. There's, there's not much else to it. All right. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Oh God. Oh God, it is better. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to tidy up the few spots that look a little hinky. I guess, I guess we made it through the first bit. I don't know, I'm not convinced we're there yet, so. This is it. Like I just, I have to just get in. And I feel like it makes sense to start kind of in the top left corner and, and I guess kind of work my way down. It goes without saying that the LEDs are the hardest thing to place here because they have a direction. They have to be placed in the right orientation or nothing works. And there's over a hundred of them. So you can see where this could, you know, go wrong real friggin' quick. First up is the little ESD chip, which is probably the biggest thing on the board. Look how small this thing is. Why why is it so small? Let's pick this guy up and just gingerly set it down. A little push. Oh God. I mean, we got there, but I'm not entirely convinced I didn't screw up the solder paste in the process. Yay! Screwing things up early on. Let's look at it under the microscope. <laughs> yeah, I definitely messed it up. Two very boring minutes later. Now I think we might be okay. Yeah, you can definitely see it's in place and it's got solder paste in most of the right place. And God, I just have to hope this is gonna work. Shall we continue? Mm. Resistor. The big old resistor is next. This is this one. That's a tiny boy. That's a resistor. Okay. There we go. This time I'm maybe not gonna squidge it down because I feel like the last time I had problems was when I uh, when I squidged it down. So this one I'm just maybe gonna leave it. Do okay, maybe a little squidge. Just a tiny tap. This is absolutely the point in the video where I'm realizing that I have placed two things in, um, I don't know. This is, this is not going to be easy. Okay. I think before I get started on the LEDs, I'm going to place a few capacitors. I need the small, two smaller ones to start. That's one. That's two. The next two down are the bigger ones. Flawless dismount. There we go. Look at that. We've got <laughs> six components placed. <sighs> We've reached the point where I can put it off no longer. I need to start placing LEDs. Now, if the data sheet is correct, then I know the orientation of the LEDs based on how they are in the spool. La, 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 la. Because the data sheet says so. Ah, oh, and yeah, I see the green dot. I absolutely do see the green dot, which means that I can actually just rely on how they come out of that. Yeah, that's uh, one. All right, here goes nothing. Can you shake less hand? That would be great. Oh, did I get it? Let's have a quick microscope check. It looks pretty okay. There it is! I hardly believe it, but it's on. And you can see, here you can definitely see the green. Right, let's see if I can't place a few more of these before I lose the will to live. Oh, 
Oh, oh bugger. Oh bugger. Mayday, mayday. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. Oh god, they're so small! I can do it. I can finish the line. I can do this. <sighs> okay. Replace the whole line. I don't know how good about it I feel, but I've placed it. Only like a bazillion more to go. I might take a break and come back to this. Let's, let's do this. Oh, it is so nerve wracking to have to rotate these things. God, I hope I'm getting them right. I think I'm getting better at this. Five more and the A is done. today. Four letters down, one to go. Done. Well, I hope. Let's have one last look under the microscope. I can hardly believe it, but it kind of looks okay. Yeah. Okay, but seriously, can we just take a moment to appreciate how nice this looks before I submit it to heat and potentially screw the whole thing up? I'm not gonna lie, when I first started placing the pieces, it felt incredibly daunting. But as I kind of kept doing it, I found a bit of a flow, and before I knew it, it was kind of done. I'm not quite sure I'd go so far as to say it was easy or anything, but it certainly wasn't the super crazy time consuming thing that I thought it might be. Not to mention, look how cool this looks. I'm really happy. I kind of feel like even if it <laughs> doesn't work, the fact that I got this out in a single sitting feels awesome. All right, enough stalling. Time to cook this little one. Let's bring out the sandwich press. You might be wondering why I'm using a sandwich press to do the reflow on this board. And that is because it is what I had to have. <laughs> it turns out that a lot of people have had really good results with basic household items. So this thing is done heating. That means it's time. Oh, it is spicy. Now, I am admittedly watching through my macro to really kind of see if it's going, because this thing is so small, it feels a little hard to know. So we're just gonna try and see if this works. I'm really not sure. Something's happening. We're getting some smoke. Oh, I think it's starting to go. Oh, it is. I think we got it. I think we got it. Gently pull it away. So it feels a little hard to check perfectly, but it does look pretty good for the most part. The bigger stuff definitely looks like it went down okay, though. There's the little solder balls. I guess those are gonna need cleaning up. Let's see. Like most of our LEDs look pretty okay. Admittedly, some of them look a little touch and go, which is why we're gonna definitely do a little continuity test, see if things worked out. Continuity tests checked out, so it's time to solder up a pixel blaze and some power. I mean, what's the worst that could happen besides letting out magic smoke or things popping and fizzing and dying and having to do the whole thing over again? Yeah, no, it'll be fine. I don't know why I suddenly feel like I don't know what I'm doing when I've done this so many times before. Before we go too far though, wires, power wires, very important. This is temporary, so these will come off again, so it doesn't have to be super pretty. Let's see what happens. Oh! Oh! 
Well, something's happening. Something that is blazingly bright. Let's hop on the Wi-Fi. Cause right now it's just making all sorts of scary bright lights. We can fix this. Let's go to the settings. These are NeoPixels. Oh yeah, it's doing a thing. Don't know how well you can see this. It's so bright. So I believe we've got 112 pixels, but we definitely have an LED to fix. We can work with this. I really am just trying to get the tiniest I want to solder. I'm not sure how confident I'm feeling about this. Did it work? Maybe. We're gonna plug it back in. We're gonna see what happens. Thinking. Better. Better. We got another one to fix though, so we ain't done here. But <laughs> the first one was a success. Oh, that's great. Okay, but for real, you guys, it works. It's bright too. Like it's got some get up and go, but also it friggin' works. Now that the hard part is out of the way, all that's really left is the stuff I know, like the back of my hand. Thankfully, the 3D printed case didn't need much redesigning to work for this, but I did need to reprint both pieces that make up the backing. The changes I did make to the design were to try and create something that was a bit nicer to use. I got a bigger battery, 2000 milliamp hours of lithium polymer goodness, and directly wired it to a LiPo Amigo for built-in charging. There's still a slide switch for turning it on and off, and it all wires up to the pixel blaze sitting on the back of the PCB. But compared to putting together the PCB, this was pretty dang simple. From there, it really just needed a front. Oh my god, I may have actually pulled it off. In spite of some real harrowing moments, I really did manage to put this whole thing together and make it work, more or less on the first try even. I think it goes without saying that I am completely over the moon about it. That said, the whole point of having an awesome light up name badge that can probably be seen from space is to actually wear it out, ideally to places where people don't already know my name or what I do. Fortunately, I have the perfect place to take it for a test run, where most people don't know me, aren't makers, and I can use it to style up a wicked outfit. I'm going to take it to a wedding in Florida. See you in a bit. Unfortunately, I may have forgotten that weddings are chaotic, noisy places that are difficult to film at and harder still to get usable audio. But I'm happy to report that in spite of some initial reservations, the name badge was a smash hit with the other wedding guests. The bright lights and animation surprised and delighted folks both in broad Florida daylight and on the darker dance floor. I honestly had no idea when I started this project, just making cute gifts for other people, that it would lead to having my name in lights like this. I'm glad that I persevered in spite of reservations and being warned against the sheer difficulty of making something like this without any real experience. Sometimes you just gotta jump in and see where it takes you. I really hope that this project can serve as an inspiration for those who sometimes feel nervous about being out of their depth because it feels just a bit too huge and overwhelming. If you take an overwhelming thing and tackle it one infinitesimally small micro LED at a time, eventually you end up where you wanna go. As always, a huge thanks to my patrons for being perpetually forgiving of me being a little too slow with posting videos and other things. And to all of you as well, since I cannot seem to keep up with any sort of regular schedule. Make sure to subscribe here to catch future videos when they do happen and follow me on social media to catch all the tidbits in between. In the meantime though, Keep creating.